Hello, today we're going to again talk about the vertex animation tools and specifically here for rigid body dynamics. In Houdini here, I already have a setup ready. So you can get this file as well. So when I press play, I have actually this wall breaking down uh, and falling apart here. So I want this simulation to be uh, in Unity. So I want the exact same result that I have here in Unity. So before I jump into like exporting this, I want to give you a small overview of the system. So here I start out with a box. So this is my wall and we're going to fracture it into different pieces. So here, these are my different pieces and I'm also going to give this a color. So we can actually have the color as well. Then I'm going to do another one. And this is actually for my wooden planks. So they actually are uh, close to each other. And this is then specifically here in a wooden structure. So I use the wood setting. Then again, we're going to give this a color, some brown color. And we're going to merge this together. So this is then my results. Then I'm going to make sure it's sort of like nicely on top of my grid. So I don't have any issues with that. Then we're going to pack the geometry. And I'm also going to transfer the color. So I have the color for the future. Then we're going to select a group where they should be animated. So everything that is selected can be animated in a simulation. Then I can also add some velocity. So each piece has a certain velocity amount. And now I'm going to use a attribute active based on the group that I made to say what, what piece should be animated or what piece should be not animated. With all of that information, we're going to use that in a solver until we have this result. As you see here, so this is the final uh, result here. And again, we're going to use an output nodes. I want to mention that if you want to build something more complex, definitely use a caching system. So file cache. So it can be a good idea to cache out simulations. So you don't have to calculate that every time. So the vertex animation tool will also like to know if you're caching or work or not. Now I'm going to go here to my output tab. If you don't have that, you can just quickly here uh, switch to output here. Uh, but I already have it open. So in our output tab, we're going to just press vertex animation tools. So this is our basic note for that. And let's look at some of the settings. So first of all, here is our method. So we are using the rigid body dynamics. So that's already right. And our game engine will be unity. Then we have our number of frames. So this is from one to 100. So that's also fine. And then our geometry. So I'm going to say what geometry I want. So in this case, I'm going to go to my wall and my destruction wall. And by doing that, you can already see it gives me an error here. So let's read our error message. So often when you have an error, there will actually be information about it, what you could do about it. So our currently our rigid body dynamics doesn't have any pivot or orient attribute. So let's go back to our simulation here and let's double check that. So here I have my uh, attribute information. And if I look to it, I don't see any of that orient or pivot. So in our solver, if we're going to go to advanced, we can actually have some output. So we can actually change what is outputting. So we want to transfer attributes and let's see if our orient is here. So here, if I take a closer look, we can see our orient and our pivot all the way down here. And we're going to make sure this is transferring to my geometry. So with that set, we can also hold the middle mouse here and you can see I have an orient and a pivot now. So let's go back to my output and that issue is fixed. Now here specifically, we have some settings now for rigid body. So I'm going to leave most as this because the default values here will give me a good result. And then we have settings for all modes. So the first setting is here is about caching. So is the input geometry cached and currently it's not cached with me. So next step is then our texture format. This will output a HDR uh, and it will be an XDR file. So if you want something else, you can change that here. But again, leave it as default and it will probably be fine. You can also export some more data. If you want to have some specific data export, you can enable some of these to get some more export, to get some more custom data. Then we also here have a the target for the texture. I'm also going to leave it as this uh, because it will give us a good value by default. You can also try to preview the texture size uh, and this will actually update the value here. So this is the currently what the texture would be. Then here we have our inputs uh, and this is what we can input into the tool. So our geometry requires a position, a pivot and an orient. And as you know, 
we actually had to enable the pivot and the orient. So this is very important for the two. You can add some more things like scaling, color, UVs, other stuff. So these are some other attributes you can input in a tool, uh, all based on attributes, of course. Then we have our exporting menu. So this is important that we set a proper output. So let's set our output to Unity uh, Rich Body. And the asset naming will be based on the node names. This is a reference to the node name. So I can give this node a better naming, uh, something like uh, Richard Body Simulation. Then furthermore, we have then our geometry name and suffix. So we can include the frame count and the FPS. So the FPS here currently, if you want to see that, we can go here all the way down to our FPS and animation settings. And right now it's at the 24. So if you want this to be higher, you can increase this. Uh, but these are the default settings here. Then we have our output files. So we will output geometry, position texture, rotation texture, and a color texture. So if you don't want all of them, you can just specifically say, I want a certain thing, uh, but I'm going to leave all of them on. And we also output a specific Unity material file. Then we're going to go to advanced. I'm not going to touch that too much. Uh, also, target engine, not going to change here any values. And also here, this is actually if you want to see some more information on the packages of Unity, you can click on the button. Now we're ready to export. You can change some settings if you want, but I'm just going to click render and go. So if everything went right, you should have a folder like this. So this is what is exporting. So we have for geometry file, then we have our textures, and then we have a specific file for Unity. So this is the material file. So with these folders, we want to import that into Unity. Here in Unity, I'm in the scene, and what I'm going to do now is here in my rigid body, drag those folders in here. Let's just now grab my folders and just copy them over here. You could decide to directly export into your Unity project if you want to. So it's up to you where you want to export the files. And now we are importing all of the information. Now, before I continue, we also need to set specific import settings. So here we actually have a preset. So we're going to click on the button here and we can use a FBX importer. And we're going to say apply. So this will be some custom settings here for that mesh. And we're going to do the same thing with our textures. So I'm going to select all my textures. I'm going to hit that preset button. And we're going to here use our, our vertex animation textures, HDR settings. So click on that, and press apply. So of course the HDR setting refers to what we had here. So if you choose something else, you're going to have to choose the other option. And now let's grab our mesh, so our geometry. So here we should just have this wall. We can maybe scale bigger in my scene. And now let's prepare that material. So we're going to go here to our material. So by default, it will give us this material with some pre-made values. So what we only need to do now is to fill in our textures. So I'm going to press the lock and I'm going to go to my textures and I'm going to drag and drop the color to my color texture. I'm going to grab here my position to the position. So make sure it's position one, not two. And I'm going to grab the rotation into a rotation. So with that set, I can now here grab my material and drag it on the wall. And as you can see, it's already working uh, as expected. So again, if I'm actually like let go of my mouse, it will actually stop updating. So that's a setting here in Unity. It will not update uh, unless I actually interact with the viewport. So we have that. Uh, we can also press here play in my game scene. So maybe let's rotate this bit. So we see it from a different angle pressing play and as you can see here this is in play mode so it's playing fine i don't see really any issues the pieces behave as they should be there are further again some more settings you can play around with so for example i don't want it to play automatically uh, the, the fps the playback speeds the interpolation which can be pretty nice so if you load the playback speed a lot uh, it will have missing data but the interpolation will actually fill that missing data and sort of like blend between that a bit nicer uh, there are some more settings here uh, and I can recommend you here disabling things that you're not using. So if you're not using, for example, the color, disable the color. So if you need, for example, uh, to load surface normal, you can use that. But it's recommended to actually disable the toggles uh, that you're not using. Now, furthermore, we have the shader from the package. So we can click on edit to jump into the shader. So this is the 
she ended up have so it's in this package i can heavily recommend you making a copy if you want to adjust this shader so you can just find this shader under your packages uh, and you should be able to find all the shader so if you're gonna make changes to this which you probably want to if you're working in your project make a copy of this and actually make sure you're not overriding uh, those shader suits just recommend it so the shader itself has a main node for the rigid body here and then it uses that data here in the vertex and then to get further get more of that data we actually need to have this node which is like a custom interpolator uh, to have for example the color to fragments here so this is actually just referencing that in to our fragment here so that's the way to go is to actually reference or get the data with an interpolator so we don't have any issues there uh, but again the main thing i can recommend you doing here is actually making a copy if you want to tweak it and that was it for this video so we had a rigid body simulation and brought it in unity with the vertex animation tools so i hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching